Yeah. Analytics, off the chain, for the challenge, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of Nation, we running the game. What is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome in to my wide receiver start and sit analysis for every matchup for the Week 9 slate. I'm Kyle, back here with the Fantasy Headliners, baby, and it's time to go through some in-depth breakdown at the wide receiver position. Hey, listen, last week, I mean, we blew it out of the water a couple of weeks ago, and then this past week, a little bit of a letdown, but there was a lot of big names that ended up missing this week. A lot of big names that just had letdown performances. So our accuracy from last week at the wide receiver position was 64%. Obviously, we were big over 70% last week. We come back down to 64%, but like some guys like DJ Moore and Mike Williams ended up missing. I mean, we nailed Pittman, Samuel Allen, Tyler Boyd uh, ended up listing him as a sit last week. So that ended up being a miss uh, because he ended up hitting as many points as he did. But we're going to bounce back this week. We're going to get back closer to 70%, hopefully higher, because that's my goal every single week is to hit around 70%. But we've got a new giveaway because it's November. Who can believe it's already November? Crazy to think how quickly the year is gone. But we got another, another giveaway. And this week, this or this month, actually, our giveaway is just cold hard cash, baby. That's right. For the month of November, we're just going to give away $500 in cash. And how do you do that? Well, you got to sign up at Prize Picks. Go over to Prize Picks, download their app, or go to their website. Either one, it doesn't matter. Do that, create a free account, and then use the code word headliners when you do that. Deposit $20 and you're in to the drawing. Now, if you've already signed up for prize picks this year, you're golden. You're already in. If you haven't signed up yet, though, what are you waiting for? In our Discord over on the MVP channel for Patreons, oh my God, people talking every single week about all the prize picks money they're winning. You got to get in on the action. So go download the app, code word headliners when you create your free account, deposit $20. Prize picks will match it. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be in the drawing for $500 in cold, hard cash. But that's enough of that. We got to get into it and we got to talk about our start and sit analysis for wide receivers here in week nine. All right. First up on Thursday night football, the New York Jets coming off a surprise win last week, looking to put together two straight, potentially a winning streak after that. Will they be able to get it done in Indianapolis? I'm not so sure about that. Yes, Mike White last week, huge week, right? But I don't know if what they did last week is going to work in back-to-back -back weeks. Jameson Crowder is going to be a start for me, and no word on whether or not Corey Davis will end up being back with it being a short week. But last week, they really utilized a short passing game. 29 targets between Crowder, Carter and Johnson, the two running backs, and then Jamison Crowder in the slot. That's a lot of targets in the short passing game. And Cincinnati, you know, staying away from them on the outside. I talked about that last week and why I had the wide receivers as sits except for Crowder. They're so strong on the outside. It was going to be attacking the middle and attacking the short passing game. And that's exactly what they did. For Indianapolis, they're going to have to probably try to open it up a little bit more. But I don't know if they do that, if Mike White is going to be able to then step up and make all those plays. For the Indianapolis Colts, Michael Pittman, I mean, he's he's becoming just a must-start guy every single week. He's becoming a tight end one at this, or excuse me, a wide receiver one at this point. He is looking really, really good. He's got four touchdowns over the last four weeks, and three of his last four games have all had over 80 receiving yards. T.Y. Hilton did end up getting banged up again last week. Uh, Paris Campbell, he's obviously done for the season. Uh, the, the tight end core outside of Michael Pittman and Zach Pascal just have not been able to stay on the field. Michael Pittman is really the only guy that I can trust right now. Cleveland versus Cincinnati, and I just talked about it a second ago, right? Cincinnati being so strong on the outside can be really tough for teams at times. Jarvis Landry is going to be my only start for me this week for the Cleveland Browns, number one, because... They're just not playing that well right now. But number two, again, Apple right now, his completion percentage is 62.9% against. Awuzie's completion percentage against is 54.4. However, Hilton in the slot is 
almost in 79%, just over 78% completion rate against Hilton, who plays nickel in the slot. So going up against Jarvis Landry, I think Jarvis Landry is really going to have the opportunity to burn Hilton this week, and he's going to be the only guy that I really trust here in Cleveland going up against Cincinnati. For Cincinnati, uh, you know, Denzel Ward could end up being out this week, but I'm going to go with all the wide receivers here regardless. I mentioned it with CJ Who's Your Mama, right? Talking about him and how well he's been doing. I mentioned that it's because he's kind of filled in some of those targets that Tyler Boyd was so used to getting. Well, all of a sudden last week, we see that shift, right? Tyler Boyd gets those targets. CJ, who's your mama, does not. And because of that, that is going to be a little bit of a back and forth that we see over the next couple of weeks, over the rest of the season, really. And I'll talk about it in the tight end video, but CJ, who's your mama, that's going to be a tough matchup for him this week. So I'm going to go back to Tyler Boyd. Obviously, Jamar Chase, you're not sitting him. And T. Higgins, he's a target hog right now. Denver at Dallas this week could end up being a really, really exciting matchup. Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy are going to be my two starts for me this week. Trayvon Diggs has been fantastic this year and in some areas and awful in other areas. So he's not allowed a ton of completions. He's not allowed a ton or he's get, get, taken a ton of interceptions, right? I mean, he's just all over the place. Just a, an amazing ball hawk. But he, he allows some really, really big plays. He allows 18.5 yards per reception. So for Cortland Sutton this week, who will likely see Trayvon Diggs, it's not necessarily about the volume that Cortland Sutton will see, but it's about that big play. And that's what I'm looking for out of Sutton this week. Definitely could end up being a great week for you if you play Cortland Sutton. It could end up being a tough week. It's going to be a large variable there. But Jerry Judy last week, we said we're going to stay away from him this week. We ended up being right. Jerry Judy didn't do much of anything last week. Um, for this week, though, we are going to go back to starting him now that we've seen him out there healthy playing. But it could end up being a huge mismatch inside against Jordan Lewis. He's not bad, but he does allow a 65% completion percentage against him, and he is not nearly as athletic as Jerry Judy is. Jerry Judy, with the explosiveness in and out, can be very, very big. Jer uh, for Jordan Lewis, he may not be able to keep up with that. So Jerry Judy, I definitely think, could have a huge week against Dallas this week. For the Dallas Cowboys, I mean, even Cooper Rush couldn't slow down this team. And you're saying he couldn't slow him down. He was the core. Exactly. I don't think anybody saw the huge performances that we saw out of them. Now, if you listen to the live shows when people are like, do I sit Amari Cooper? Do I sit C.D. Lamb? Most of the time I was like, no, I'm fine playing them. Now, if you're concerned, then you got to do what you got to do. But me personally, if it's my lineup, I still play them. And they ended up balling out. What a job by Cooper Rush. Congrats to him on that huge dub on the road in Minnesota. We'll see if we can keep it rolling against Denver, though, in a tougher matchup with Dak Prescott likely being back now. One thing to keep in mind, there's no Von Miller to worry about. Von Miller being traded to the Los Angeles Rams. Now they're not going to have to worry about that pass rush coming from one side, which would be great for Dak Prescott coming back after being out this week. Uh, Michael Gallup continued to monitor that. He does have two full weeks of practice in by this time. Um, and then Cedric Wilson, when Michael Gallup comes back, will probably not be a guy that will be relevant uh, for any portion of the season coming up. Houston at Miami. Not great, uh, not great records for these teams this year. Neither of them playing that well, obviously, 100% Houston. Miami, a little bit of a letdown with how they're playing right now. But for the Houston Texans, Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins are both going to be starts for me. Miami has allowed the second most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. That's where Brandon Cooks come in. He's the volume guy. Big plays. He, he's going to feast this week. Nico Collins for me. They allow the second most touchdowns to opposing wide receivers. That's where Nico Collins comes in for me this week. Definitely looked pretty good last week. Definitely think that he's becoming a guy. Who's going to be the quarterback? Is it going to be Davis Mills? Will Tyrod Taylor be back this week? Taylor is going to be better for Nico Collins, so we'll continue to monitor that week after week. But I'm going to put Collins as a start this week, thinking that he finds the end zone for a big red zone reception. For Miami, Devontae Parker, Jalen Waddle are going to end up being starts for me. Uh, injured, out, doubtful, Will Fuller. It doesn't sound like he's going to practice at all this week based on what I heard 
heard prior to this recording. Uh, but for Devontae Parker, he looked great coming back last week. 11 targets, 8 receptions, 85 yards. Jalen Waddle only had 4 catches, but he had 12 targets. Two is slinging it around a little bit. I talked about it in the waiver wire video. Last week was a really tough matchup for him, but in the two weeks prior, over 600 combined passing yards. We'll see if he can get back on track this week against Houston. Atlanta and Nolans get to meet up this week in an interdivisional rivalry. Russell Gage, Olamide, Zacchaeus are going to be sits. Taji Sharp is going to be a start. Now, I talked about this in the wide receiver video. Russell Gage is likely going to see my, uh, La Ma <laughs> Lattimore, Marshawn Lattimore. That's who he's probably going to see on the outside, Russell Gage. All right, now that we've gotten past that mix-up, I have won a video, ladies and gentlemen, where I mess up a name, get tongue-tied, whatever it is. Happened again right here with Lattimore. But Gage is probably going to see Lattimore, so I'm not interested in that matchup. Uh, Olamide Zacchaeus, not interested in putting him in my lineup at all right now. He hasn't done anything all year. Sharp is a high-risk, low-reward play. The guy who's their cornerback to, Adebo, Right now this season, he allows a 65% completion percentage, and the Saints allow the fourth most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. Now, I sat here and I looked at this matchup for quite a while. I was not 100% sure that I could start anybody this week outside of Kyle Pitch, which we'll talk about in the tight end video. But after looking at it, looking at the numbers, Sharp is a guy, I don't know. I think he's a guy that puts up 10 fantasy points. He's going to have a super low floor for me this week. I'm thinking about, or super high ceiling, I mean. He's going to be right around probably ceiling-wise. 12 fantasy points tops if he finds the end zone. I've just got a feeling that he's going to be the guy. He's going to be the main target this week. Um, and, if they're, and if they're tough against Kyle Pitts, which I see Kyle Pitts winning this week again. I'll talk about that in the tight end video. If they focus on Kyle Pitts a lot, and then Lattimore's got Gage on one side, Sharp on the other side could end up having a pretty decent day. So it is a little bit of a, it's a little bit of risk to go there with him. Not sure I'm going to tell anyone to start him over many other options. I just think he hits 10 fantasy points this week for the new Orleans saints. I don't know what we're going to see this week from this offense. No Jameis Winston. Taysom Hill can come back, but will he? And if he does, what does the offense look like? And can Trevor Simeon get it done, done against Atlanta? Those are going to be my questions. So Callaway, Smith, Harris are all going to be sits for me. If it's Taysom Hill, I think it's a lot of running the ball. A lot of, a lot of running the ball. Mark Ingram I like this week. I just, I just don't see them airing it out and giving these guys a whole lot of upside. Atlanta only allows 35 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. Uh, they're two cornerbacks, Moreau and Terrell. On the outside, Moreau allows a 63% completion percentage. Terrell allows a 47.8% completion percentage. But on the ground, they give up the eighth most fantasy points. So Kamara, Mark Ingram, I think they're going to be running the ball an awful lot this week. I don't expect a whole lot of deep plays. Um, and it would take them scoring to really hit the 10 fantasy points. Las Vegas Raiders at the New York Giants. And for the Raiders, Henry Ruggs is going to be my only start for this team this week. He will likely see Bradbury, who it was it was interesting watching Bradbury in the Chiefs game this week. Um, which actually is still on right now. Late fourth quarter, still 17-17 while I'm recording this because it's starting to get so late. I had to get it done so we could get it out as early as possible on Tuesday. But Bradbury did a really, really good job of locking up Travis Kelsey quite a bit. So um, I, I expect him to be on Henry Ruggs more so this week. Um, then playing, you know, up against like Travis Kelsey, like they did this week, I expect them to push him back outside in a more traditional set, but he does give up some big plays. He is prone to big plays. He did do a really good job this past week. So I think Henry Ruggs is going to be my only start this week. Um, I mean, they just, I mean, New York did a really, really good job with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, so to sit here and say that, you know, Las Vegas is going to come out and perform any better is really, really tough right now. But they are coming out of the bye. So hopefully they've got things set up. Hunter Renfro, I I really wanted to go with Hunter Renfro, Hunter Renfro as well. He's got the second most targets on the team. He's kind of the tr the trusted target right now, of uh, especially since Darren Waller was out, um, you know, prior to the bye. But with, with Hunter Renfro, he is kind of that that trusted guy of the wide receiver corpse right now where we see Derek Carr just kind of go to him in those situations now Jabril Peppers for the Giants is out 
and it means Darnay Holmes is going to be stepping in as, as that nickel corner, and he would be the guy facing off against Hunter Renfro. And if he was going up against Peppers, I actually would probably start Renfro. But Holmes has been creep, creeping up on Jabril Peppers' playing time, and he allows barely over 50% completion percentage in the slot. Uh, played almost 100 snaps there, about, uh, about 15, 20 less than what Jabril Peppers has done. They've kind of gone back and forth. I actually like him to lock down Hunter Renfro a little bit more this week than what Jabril Peppers might have been able to. Now, for the New York Giants, I had Kadarius Tony as a start here, and then he got hurt in the game that's currently on, uh, and it didn't look good. I mean, he was walking around holding. I'm not sure if it was his wrist. It was his hand. He came down weird with his helmet on it when he landed on the ground. He haven't heard anything yet, but he ended up leaving the field the last time that I saw him, so I ended up having to switch him to injured out doubtful because at this point, I don't know what's going on with him. I did write here that they were starting to get healthy, and then... Look at what happened there. Uh, Dante Pettis also hurt. Uh, start, you know, at one point, Sterling Shepard had to come off the field. He had went back on, though. But this week is all, is it's going to be about the short passing game this week. And this is why Kadarius Tony was originally listed as his start. But the Las Vegas Raiders, they have 158 total QB pressures this season. Just for a little bit of a comparison, if you're like, well, Kyle is 158 a lot. The Los Angeles Rams have 172. So yeah, that's quite a bit. Las Vegas is creating a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They're going to be pre- uh, they're going to have pressure on Danny Pennies this week. And because of that, Sterling Shepard is really going to have to be the guy. And then who is it going to be after that at this point? Can Barkley get back this week? Is it going to be Evan Ingram? Evan Ingram and Kyle Rudolph both scored touchdowns this past week. Is it going to be focusing on them a little bit more? Whatever it is for the Giants, they're just going to have to focus on getting rid of the ball and getting rid of it quickly. New England's been looking good, and really, their their wide receivers haven't been doing anything. Jacoby Myers isn't seeing the type of targets that he was earlier in the season. Kendrick Bourne, I mean, he threw a touchdown a couple of weeks ago, but other than that, he hasn't done anything lately. Nelson Aguilar's had a couple of big plays, but nothing crazy. And now they're going up against a Carolina defense that, as bad as their offense has been, their defense has been really, really good. They allow the six fewest fantasy points per game to wide receivers, and they do a really good job at limiting de- big plays, okay? If you look at the stats for this Carolina defense, the three guys that are their main cornerback, so the two two guys that play on the outside and their nickel cornerback, the three guys that have played the most snaps at the cornerback position combined allow under 10 yards per reception. Now, their completion percentage is a little bit on the higher side, but they give up kind of those short passing, those those high percentage passing plays, and then they close quickly and they shut it down. So they're, they're really focused on not giving up the big plays. And because of that, I can't go with anyone from New England this week. Are they going to run the football, rely on the tight ends, whatever it may be? I'm sure they'll have a game plan for it. But I just don't love the floor of any of these guys this week playing against a defense that has been so good. Speaking of um, not being as good, the Carolina offense just, just hasn't. Now, just, I mean, obviously... Sam Darnold got his bell rung. According to the recent reports, um, he was supposed to see somebody on Monday, but I'm not sure if he's been cleared as of this time. Last reports I saw of earlier today, he he's in the concussion protocol. So when you watch this video, it might be different. But as of right now, still in the concussion protocol. So what does it bring from the quarterback position? Really the only guy you can trust here right now. I mean, it, it, it's DJ Moore, right? It's DJ Moore. Terrace Marshall Jr., he's been out. He's been hurt as of recently. Don't love it. Uh, Robbie Anderson hasn't done anything. Carolina, if you've got DJ Moore, you got to put him in. Just the the ceiling has been super limited the last couple of weeks, which is just, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to watch. Buffalo at Jacksonville. Stefan Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, who put up a big zero last week, are all going to be starts for me, even going up against Jacksonville. Even if Buffalo has a big lead, we know that they're going to let it rip 40 times a game, right? They are going to throw and throw the football a lot. And Cole Beasley, you know, I talked about this quite a few times so far this season. Cole Beasley and Dawson Knox, they take away from each other. Dawson Knox being out right now, Cole Beasley's thriving. At the beginning of the year before Dawson Knox came on, 
Cole Beasley was thriving. That stretch where Dawson Knox was thriving, Cole Beasley really didn't do anything. So he's had been he's he's been a little bit inconsistent this year. When him and Knox are on the field together, I'm giving the I'm giving Knox kind of the advantage right now, but Knox is still going to be out for a couple of more weeks. So Cole Beasley is going to be another solid start this week for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Marvin Jones Jr., LaVisca Chanel, DJ Chark, who is out. For some reason, I accidentally put DJ Chark as a start. It caught me off guard. I said the name. I hit the wrong button, apparently, in the spreadsheet. Anyway, DJ Chark's out. He doesn't matter. Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, Jamal Agnew, all three of them. I'm not starting them. Buffalo allows the second fewest fantasy points per game. This offense is a mess. I don't trust Trevor Lawrence right now. I don't trust Urban Meyer to get his head out of his backside. I don't trust anybody in Jacksonville. Minnesota at Baltimore. Now, Minnesota is coming off a tough one at home. For them, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, they're both going to be starts. Justin Jefferson, for me, has a lower uh, a lower ceiling this week. Humphrey and Young, the, the opposing cornerbacks on the outside for the Baltimore Ravens, neither of them have a completion rate against of higher than 60%. These guys are absolute studs on the outside. Their nickel quarter, though, Tavon Young allows 81% of the passes towards him to be completed. That's Adam Thielen all day long, baby. So Justin Jefferson, his ceiling is coming crashing down this week. Adam Thielen's ceiling, though, is going to be extremely high. Really like the potential upside for Adam Thielen and what he could do this week. For the Baltimore Ravens, though, I mean, Minnesota allows the six most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receiver. They just got thrashed by Cooper Cooper Rush and the Dallas offense. Marquise Brown, Rashad Bateman, both of these guys against Minnesota. Oh, yeah, fire them up. The Chargers at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Chargers are coming off just a tough game. They have not looked great the last two games. They're going to look to bounce back while the Eagles, they're flying high right now. No pun intended. Coming off a huge shutout loss at the Detroit Lions. So for Philadelphia and LAC, who are going to be the guys? Well, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams for LAC, they're going to be starts for me this week. Keenan Allen, his first touchdown since week three last week and his first double-digit target game since week four. It was really, really good to see Keenan Allen kind of picking that back up a little bit. We know that ceiling has been lower lately because Mike Williams has been so involved. But the last two weeks have been awful for Mike Williams. And now this week, he's going into a potential matchup against Darius Slay. That could end up being even worse. And Philadelphia allows the third fewest fantasy points per game at wide receiver. So the ceiling for these two this week, really, really low for me. As I look for Austin Eckler and Jared Cook to get a lot of run. And then for Philadelphia this week, I mean, first off, Jalen Rager is now hurt. I'm not 100% sure who, the, in fact, the wide receiver three will be. So I'm only going to list Devontae Smith and Quez Watkins here. Yes, I said Devontae, not Devonta. Devontae Smith. I've got both of these guys listed as sits here. The Chargers are allowing the third fewest fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers right now. And on top of it, Hertz is barely a lot. Hertz is barely averaging 150 passing yards a game over the last three weeks. He doesn't look good. This offense doesn't look good in the passing game right now. And the only person I can really trust here is Dallas Goddard. But that's for another video. Green Bay coming off a huge win on Thursday Night Football against the previously undefeated Arizona Cardinals on the road. And they get to go on the road again to Kansas City, who is struggling to beat the New York Giants as we speak. So who's going to have the upper hand here? We'll see how the rest of this game plays out. But for Green Bay, Devontae Adams should end up being back. He should be fine. Alan Lazard, haven't heard anything on him on whether he will be back or not. I think a lot of that depends on whether or not he's vaccinated at this point. So I'm not 100% sure if he's going to be close to returning. I know Devontae Adams should be back this week, though. So I've got him listed as a start. Lazard is going to be a sit. Randall Cobb will be a sit. MVS was really, really, really close to being back last week. He flew on the plane to Arizona but they just couldn't activate him. They just weren't ready to do it yet. I'm hoping he comes back this week, though. I want to see that deep game get working again for Green Bay. I think it's something that they're missing right now, and as soon as MVS is back, they're going to start trying to push it down the field a little bit more to him, and that's going to be great for him. Going up against Kansas City, for Kansas City right now, I mean, they're just struggling. I mean, they're riding the struggle bus right now. They don't look in sync. The offense is dropping passes. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is throwing some interceptions, even 
know, not all of them are his fault. Travis Kelsey with just an awful fumble. The defense is giving up some big plays. They just don't look great this week, or they just don't look great this season. And now again, they're struggling to even beat New York. They're in the red zone right now at the end of the fourth quarter. Maybe kick a, maybe they'll kick a, a field goal here. Maybe they'll make that work. I'm not 100% sure. Focusing on the video right now, but again, it's getting so late. I had to get this done so it comes out Tuesday morning. Uh, but you can't trust any of their wide receiver twos because you don't know who it's going to be on a weekly basis. So as far as wide receivers go, Tyreek Hill is the only one we can run with. Speaking of previously undefeated Arizona, they get to go on the road to San Francisco this week, and they get to play angry against a division rival. Hopkins, Green, Christian Kirk, all of them are going to be starts for me this week. I expect all of them to just be on their A game. I mean, that was a letdown performance against Green Bay last week. They should have won that game. They didn't pull it out. Obviously, the final play of the game, no idea what A.J. Green was doing. I expect them to be playing angry in San Francisco and to put together one heck of a performance for the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, look at Debo Samuel, obviously going to be a start. Can't really go with Ayuk or Sanu right now. Yes, they got some more targets last week against Chicago. Um, a little bit of a different matchup there than what this Arizona Cardinals defense prevent, uh, presents. But for Debo Samuel, I mean, the the, uh, the dude's just balling out right now. Loved him coming into the season. Glad to see him performing so well. It has come as the, at, at a cost, though, to Brandon Ayuk. But for Ayuk and Sanu, they're going to be sits. Debo Samuel going up against Arizona. They're going to get him involved. Tennessee at the LA Rams is going to be my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week. Don't forget our friends over at Manscaped are our main sponsor for us again this season. If you're going to be getting any personal care products soon, you got to head to manscaped.com. Use code word headliners. You're going to get 20% off your entire order, and you're going to get free shipping. Manscaped.com. Make sure you go over there, show them some love, and the headliners some love before you show yourself some love. But ladies and gentlemen, Let's go ahead and talk about this must-watch matchup. And it's a must-watch matchup for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, let's talk about Tennessee here real quick. You're going to see A.J. Brown's name listed on the screen. And you are going to see nothing next to his name, whereas with everybody else, you've seen starter sit. I'm doing this on purpose, ladies and gentlemen, because I am not going to let the masses dictate my analysis. I'm going to leave it blank here for right now, and I'm just going to lay out the facts for all of you on why A.J. Brown could have a huge game or why he could have a complete dud, okay? So let's talk about the Tennessee offense. It's going to potentially be a mess. There's no Derrick Henry. There's no main run game to lean on this week like there has been in the past. A.J. Brown is going to be the target, especially if Julio Jones ends up being out again, which means there could be a lot of targets coming his way. Is he going to see Jalen Ramsey this week? Probably not a ton. He will a little bit. He'll be on him every once in a while, just like he was DK Metcalf a couple of weeks ago. He was on DK Metcalf at times. Not every single one. DK Metcalf did beat him up a couple of times. But you're going to see Jalen Ramsey move in there, and we all know Jalen Ramsey is an absolute stud. Okay, He's going to win more times than not. Those are some pros and cons to A.J. Brown. So another con, though, is that they're bringing Von Miller in. Von Miller has a physical scheduled for Tuesday. So depending on when, when you watch this video, he may or may not have already done it. But if he passes his physical, he can be on the field Sunday night for this game. So you're going to have Aaron Darnold. You're going to have Leonard Floyd. You're going to have Von Miller. And you're going to have one of the scariest pass rushes in all the NFL. And because of that, Ryan Tannehill... Is he going to have enough time to throw? The defense literally with no Derrick Henry, they're not going to have to worry about the run nearly as much. They can pin their ears back. They can go after the quarterback. They can put pressure on him. And they could make life just a living hell for Ryan Tannehill. So this week, you make your own decision on A.J. Brown. He's a stud. He's played great as of recently. He looks like he's finally healthy. We love A.J. Brown around here. But the problem is, is if I sit here and I tell you to start him and he has a bad game, it is what it is, right? If I tell you to sit him and he has a bad game, no one's going to say anything about it. If I tell you to sit him and he has a great game, y'all are going to come back here and you're going to tell me how stupid it was. 
I'm not going to let you do that. You did it a couple of weeks ago with DK Metcalf. You don't show love when I make other big time calls. Some of you do, but I'm not going to let the masses dictate this one. And by the masses, I mean the idiots out there who want to come back and be disrespectful because of one wrong call, even though I'm, a, I'm right a majority of the time. So you make your own call on, D, on A.J. Brown this week. You decide whether or not this is enough of a risk for you to take on. Are you playing him? Absolutely. If you own A.J. Brown, he's going to be in your lineup. Should you expect 10 fantasy points out of him? I don't know. That's your decision, not mine. It's your lineup. Now let's talk about the LA Rams. The LA Rams, they're going to be absolute studs this week. I mean, Tennessee is allowing the most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. That's one of the reasons why this is my Manscaped must-watch matchup. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, Van Jefferson, all three of these guys could absolutely eat this week. I absolutely love all three of them to dominate. They're coming off a great performance last week. I expect it to continue against this Tennessee defense, and this has a whole lot of things to watch. What is Tennessee going to look like without Derrick Henry? What is this LA Rams team going to do to a second that has shown a lot of big plays to wide receivers this year. It's going to be one big matchup to watch. Monday Night Football is going to be Chicago at Pittsburgh. And this one, I think, is going to end up being a lot of fun to watch. And I hope that Matt Nagy listens to his coaches and lets them run with the game plan that they had last week. Darnell Moon is going to be a start for me. Pittsburgh is allowing over 38 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. But will Fields have enough time to throw? Mooney is his guy right now, okay? You can see that connection building with Darnell Mooney. I'm going to go with him as a start because they're going to have to throw it. Hopefully, they just get that game plan running last week. If you watch, so I put it on our community tab, but if you would have seen that, I did a film breakdown of Justin Fields and the Bears offense, and I put it over on Patreon, but I made it public so everybody could watch it. If you watch that, you would have seen that a lot of the things that I said to get Justin Fields going, they actually did this past week. So that was a really great opportunity, hopefully, for all of you to see it and then see what they did this past week and be like, man, that Kyle dude knows what he's talking about. No, I'm kidding. That the Chicago Bears actually put him in a position to succeed. Hopefully, they do it again this week. I, I mean, it, it's, it's a great opportunity. And for Pittsburgh on their side, Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool are both going to be starts for me. But are the Bears going to get the Big Ben? If they do, it's going to be a really, really, really long night. But that Bears defense, it bends and breaks. See Debo Samuel last week. Debo, Jimmy Garoppolo, that connection last week, they were all over the Bears defense. Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool, they both have the same speed, acceleration, explosiveness to be able to also do the same thing. There you have it, Headliner Nation. That's going to do it for me on my wide receiver start and sit analysis. Make sure you hit that like button for me. Comment down below if there's anybody that you're worried about this week. And then also, if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners, you got to hit that subscribe button. Stick around and become a part of Headliner Nation today. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all enjoy your rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Stay safe and stay healthy.